So I guess let's start. Uh, welcome to the uh, one of the crypto session. Uh, so the title of the first talk is uh, Revocable Content Digital Signature by Tomoyuki, Alex, and uh, Takashi. So Takashi will give a talk. Thank you for introduction. So I'm Takashi from NTT and Kyoto University. And today I will talk about revocable content digital signatures. So let me start from introducing the concept of a copy protection. Suppose that Alice bought some game from some company and she enjoyed the game a lot. So she wants to share the game with her friends and just copied this and distribute to her friends. And then, okay, so they play the game and so they are happy about playing the game. But of course the company is not happy because they're not paying for playing the game. Before preventing such a copying attack, the company, the one way to prevent such a copy is to encode a game program into a quantum state. Then by the no cloning theorem, Alice cannot copy the game and so they uh, cannot distribute the game to the friends. So they are not happy, but uh, the company is happy because they prevent the copy. So this is the concept of quantum copy protection. So this is, uh, for this copy protection, the no cloning theorem is essential. And uh, a related notion is a secure leasing. So in secure leasing, the company wants to lease a game program to the user uh, for a certain period. So uh, when the game is leased, the user downloads this content program and she can play the game for a while. And at some point, uh, when the leasing expires, the company requests her to delete the game. And then she deletes the a program a, and generates some proof that she actually deleted the quantum state of which encodes the game. And then the company verify this proof of deletion. And if it passes the verification, the company is convinced that uh, the user surely uh, deleted the game. So this is secure leasing. And uh, I would like to remark that for secure leasing, no cloning is also essential, especially if no cloning, I mean, the, if the user can clone the same state, then secure leasing can be broken as follows. So suppose that the user downloads the game and then suppose that she can somehow clone the same state. Then she can just use one of the copies to generate the proof of a deletion. Then company is a, convinced that she actually deleted the game, but actually a, she still has another copy of the game. So for achieving the goal of secure leasing, a, again, the no cloning is essential. So both copy protection and secure leasing are, are some functionalities uh, that for which no cloning term is essential. And the classical information is not useful for achieving that and quantum information is essential for achieving them. And in recent years, uh, there have been several works that considered copy protection and secure leasing for cryptographic functionality. And especially uh, we focus on public key encryption and digital signatures uh, which are uh, the, one of the most uh, important cryptographic functionality. Uh, and for public encryption, uh, there are already a, both copy protection and secure leasing. On the other hand, for digital signatures, even though there is uh, some research uh, that studied copy protection, but there no research studied a secure leasing for digital signatures. So the natural question is the following. Can we do secure leasing for digital signatures? In this work, uh, we answer the question affirmatively. So we constructed two types of secure leasing for digital signatures. The first one is called digital signatures with revocable signing keys uh, or DSR key for short. In DSR key, uh, signing keys can be securely leased. And uh, after the leasing period expires, signing keys uh, can be deleted. And the addition of signing key can be regarded as a revocation of signing ability. And this is why we call it 
get the signature with revocable signatures. And we construct such a, a signature scheme with revocation a capability of signing key, a Bayesian quantum hardness of learning with error problem, which is the basis of post quantum crypto. And this is regarded as a very standard assumption in cryptography. And uh, our second construction uh, is called digital signatures with revocable signing keys or DSR sign for short. In DSR sign, uh, what can be securely list is signatures instead of signing keys. And we construct it based on one function, which is even more standard assumption in cryptography. Here, let me make some comparison uh, between copy protection and secure leasing. So in general, copy protection and secure leasing are incomparable functionality. On the other hand, uh, in most cases, a copy protection is much harder to achieve than a secure leasing. And uh, in most construction of copy protection, we can easily modify that to achieve secure leasing. So in this sense, copy protection is uh, somehow stronger functionality. So from this perspective, uh, let's compare existing and our work. So in the previous work, uh, there was the copy protection of signing keys. On the other hand, we achieved secure leasing of signing keys. So uh, the, what we achieved is a little bit weaker than what is achieved by the previous work. On the other hand, the previous work relied on a very strong assumption of indistinguishability of classification and one function. And especially so indistinguishability of classification is regarded as a very, very, very strong assumption in cryptography. On the other hand, uh, our construction just relies on LW assumption, which is a very standard assumption and uh, that is even used in a practical post quantum crypto system. So in terms of security uh, or assumption, uh, ours relies on much more reliable assumption. So here the trade off between what we achieved and the assumption. And this is about the comparison of DSL key and for the, our second construction, DSL sign, uh, we are not aware of any previous work that considered copy protection version of it. And so we believe our is the first to consider the unclonability for signatures. Okay, so from now, I would like to explain a little bit more detail of uh, our constructions. So first, I would like to explain what are digital signatures. In digital signatures, a signer first generates a pair of two keys, verification key and signing key. And the verification key is made public, and so this is available to everyone. On the other hand, the signer keeps signing key a secret, and this is not given to the other people. And when the signer wants to generate a signature on some message M, a, the signer uses the signing key to generate a signature on the message. And then this signature can be verified by using verification key by everyone. So this, this is the functionality of digital signatures. So what is the security of digital signatures? Suppose that there is an adversary and the adversary can see the verification key because that is public, but it cannot see the signing key. And additionally, adversary can see uh, many pairs of messages signatures. And then the adversary tries to generate a new pair of signature and the message, uh, such that the new message doesn't belong to the set of messages on which the signature is already generated. So the security says that adversary cannot do that. And so this is the security of digital signatures. Okay, so from now I will explain a, our definition and construction of DSL key, uh, where we securely lease signing keys. So the, in DSL key, uh, the, the protocol works as follows. The company uh, tries, uh, wants to lease the, some signing key to the user, and so it encodes the signing key into some quantum state. Then the user downloads it to the local device, and then this signing key can be used to generate a signature on any message. And after generating some signatures, because the signing key is the quantum, so the state of the signing key may change from the original state, but we require that the a state after signing should be still usable for further signing. So this signing key can be used to generate many signatures on many messages. 
as many as she wants. And at some point, the company wants to request her to delete the signing key. At this point, then the user deletes the signing key and generates a proof of deletion. Then by using some private verification key for the deletion, the company checks if this is very a valid deletion proof or not. And if it passes the verification, uh, this ensures that the signer no longer has the ability to generate a further signature. So this is what we want to achieve by the SR key. And uh, we construct the SR key from LWE by going through uh, another type of signature, which we call two-tier one-shot signatures, or 2OFF for short. So in 2OFF, there is a set of algorithms that generates two parameters, public parameter and secret parameter. And public parameter is, of course, made public, but secret parameter is hidden. And by using public parameter, everyone can generate a pair of quantum signing key and classical verification key. And uh, the message space of 2OFS is one bit. And when message equal to zero, uh, we can generate a signing key to generate a signature on zero. And the signature on zero can be verified by using the public verification key. So this is just a normal signature. And when the message equal to one, a, we can also use signing key to generate a signature on one, but uh, what is different from the uh, normal signature and also normal runter signature is that a, for verifying a signature on one, we need the secret parameter, uh, which is not known to the public. So only the authority who knows the secret parameter can verify the signature on one. So, okay, so this is a functionality of 2OFS. And uh, as a security, we require the following. A one cannot generate uh, signatures on both zero and one simultaneously. So as I said, a signing key can be used to generate either a signature on zero or a signature one, but one cannot generate both of them simultaneously. And this is security, and more precisely, this holds when secret, secret parameter is not given to the other battery, even if verification key is generated by the other battery. So this is the security of two tier one sort signature, or two OFS. And uh, we observe that two OFS can be constructed from LWE based on existing work by Chitagawa et al. So we can just use it. So from now, I explain how to construct the DSR key from 2OFS. And uh, the idea is to use a classical construction called Lamport signatures and instance add it using 2OFS instead of one function. So how does it work? The signing key of our DSR key consists of a pair of signing keys of 2OFS. And we label each of the signing key by bit zero and one and uh, so for signing a message, one bit message M, the signer uses the signing key corresponding to M to sign on zero. Here, remark that regardless of the value of M, it signs on zero in zero M. So this is a little bit confusing part, but the reason will become clear soon. For example, uh, when she wants to sign M equal one, it uses the a signing key for the bit one to sign on zero. And if you remember the definition of 2OFS, the signature on zero can be publicly verifiable. And uh, the reason why we need to sign on zero is to make sure that the signature should be uh, verified publicly. And uh, it is easy to show that this satisfies the one-time security as a normal data signature, meaning that when other battery gets only one signature, it cannot generate further signatures. Because intuitively, when other battery is given only signature on one, then the no information of the signing key for zero is used. So it is not very useful for generating the signature on one, uh, for zero. And uh, for deletion of the signing key, so, okay, so, Suppose that after generating the signature on one, uh, she wants to delete the remaining sign key, then she uses the remaining key to sign on one. And the signature on one of the two OFS is regarded as a proof of deletion. 
And if you remember the definition of 2OFF, two -F, for verifying the signature on one, we need some secret parameter. But this is fine because in our definition of DSR key, we allow uh, the company to use the private information to verify the proof of the definition. So this is consistent to our definition of DSR key. And why is this secure DSR key? And actually, this is the easy consequence of the security of 2FF. And security of 2FF says that you cannot generate a signature on zero and one simultaneously, but proof of deletion is a signature on one, and uh, the, the signature of DSR key is a signature on zero of 2FF. So the, by, by the direct reduction to the security of 2FF, once you generate a deletion proof, you can no longer generate a proof, uh, signature for the corresponding uh, position or corresponding bit. But uh, this is actually not a full construction uh, because there are still two problems. The first problem is that it only supports one bit messages. And the second is that it is only one time secure. And uh, so we have to overcome these issues. And actually we overcome these two issues by using analogs of some classical techniques. So let me start from the first one. From one bit to one bit messages, uh, we use bit by bit signing and then hash and sign. So let me explain this by using a picture. So suppose that you want to sign a uh, message M, then you first use some hash function to hash this into some small digits, H of M. Then you uh, sign on each bit of H of M. And in this way, you can expand the message space a while preserving the one-time security. And then, so the first problem is either resolved by this idea. And for the second problem of a strengthening one-time security to maintain security, again, the idea is inspired by classical analog. So essentially the idea is the following. Whenever signing on a new message, we generate a fresh new key pair and then sign on the message concatenated with the new verification key. And then, each signing key is used only once, so we can reduce many times security to one time security. So what does it mean? So suppose that you have a key pair, verification key and signing key, and you want to sign in this message. Then you generate a fresh key pair of verification key or signing key, and you use the old signing key a, to sign in a, the concatenation of the message and the verification key. And at this point, a, the, the, the new verification key is certified by the old signing key. So it can use the new signing key for the further signing. And in this way, we can make sure that each signing key is used only once. And this is why we can reduce mean time security to one time security. And this is the, it finished the a explanation of DSR key. And next, I will briefly explain uh, the DSR sign, which is our second construction. So in DSR sign, what is list is the signatures. So when the user downloads signatures, uh, everyone can verify the signature. And uh, when it is deleted, uh, she can issue some proof of deletion. And after issuing the proof of deletion, uh, she no longer has a valid, a uh, valid signatures, and this is the third time. Okay, so this is proof of deletion is verified by some private verification key. And unfortunately, I don't have a time to explain the detail of the construction of the third time, but we constructed it from one function, and uh, I just sketched the construction. And uh, our construction is based on the intermediate tool, which we call 2TF token signatures, or 2TF for short. And this is very similar to 2OFF, but the difference is that the security is required only when the verification key is honestly generated. And if you're familiar with the relevant literatures, this relationship between 2TF and 2OFF is very similar to the relationship between a, the normal token signature and one should signature. And we contract 2TF from running function inspired by the recent work about public verifiable deletion. And uh, yeah, the construction sketch here, and I don't have time to explain, but if you're familiar with the work, probably uh, this sketch may make sense to you, I hope. And uh, we construct DSR sign from 2TF, uh, and 
idea is to use the sign key of 2TS as a signature of DSO sign. And because the sign key of 2TS has some unclonable property, and this is inherited to our uh, signature of the construction, and this is why signature has some nice property A of the security. And so this is the idea. Okay, let me summarize my talk. We constructed two types of secure leasing for a digital signature. The one is DSR key, a, a where signing keys can be leased. And this is based on LW assumption. And the second is a DSR sign where signatures can be leased. And this is based on one of functions. And as intermediate tools for constructing them, we introduced two tier one shot signatures and two tier token signatures uh, which is a weaker variant of one shot signature and token signature from standard assumption, uh, like LWE and volume function. So, this is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. So, we have time for questions. Okay, so thanks for the nice talk. So I'm wondering, are there any uh, implementation of uh, publicly uh, verifiable certified deletion of signatures or? Okay, thanks for the question. So uh, let me see. I think, a, for example, if the if we require public verifiability, I guess that imply a public key quantum money. And the only known construction of public key quantum money from, from some assumption is based on IO. So I believe we need to rely on IO if we want to achieve public verifiability. OK, thank you. Any more questions? OK, so let's maybe thank Kakashi again.